Okay, so we'll continue where we last left off. We had a big cliffhanger last time. We were spending all of that time uh, coding the app to that point. We were starting to about to retrieve the data from the database and then to be continued. So we're going to continue that today. Uh, if you kind of worked at it, you might have been able to figure out what you needed to do, but we'll do it together now. And it's similar to what we did in the assessment from part two. So you need to open your index.js file. We'll get back to the part of the code we were working with last time. Um, one way to get there, remember you can get used to using Control F to find. Remember you can find. Uh, if you remember what was some of the code we were working with last time, we might be able to jump down to it. We were starting to work with fn show comics table. So in my case, it's all the way down to approximately line 400. So we're at line 400 there. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so I said we, we, we're going to do approximately 1,000 lines of code in our project. So we're... Uh, we're uh, we're pretty far along now. I'm counting the JavaScript and the HTML and the CSS. Approximately with all of those languages, we have uh, a thousand lines. So somewhere around line 400, the the table starts probably. I mean that function to show the table. And where we last left off was this for loop. So up until this point, we've got the loop happening x amount of times based on the length of the data in the database. Uh, and what comes next is to make this data be um, dynamic. OK, so I'm going to zoom in. Right now, this data is static. Uh, and we need to do what we did uh, for the assessment in that we need to have some part of it as HTML and some part of it is JavaScript, and then continue the HTML, and continue the JavaScript, and so forth. So that means we're going to break the quote, start our HTML, tr, a table row, and a cell of data, table data, and then quote, space, plus, space. So start the HTML and then we'll write some JavaScript. This needs to be uh, this needs to be uh, dynamically processed as JavaScript, and then we need to continue the HTML. So another plus for concatenation. We're continuing to add to it. Quote. And it should look red because it's HTML, and then black because it's JavaScript, and then red again. So you write HTML and then JavaScript and then HTML. You should see what's coming next. We then need to write JavaScript again. So we continue here. We end the quote <coughs> right here. Space plus space. HTML, JavaScript, HTML, JavaScript. HTML. So we need to plus quote the rest. So that should be a bit familiar from the assessment. That was where we left the cliffhanger off last time. It's uh it's now set up in a way to create this string, str, that has some HTML and some JavaScript. So obviously you have to be very careful. You've got your closing quotes and your plus and all of that. Make sure it looks something like this. Don't forget plus here, quotes plus here. Save it and run it. We'll see how it's going so far. but. Last time I should have run I should have run it before I added the quotes. Remember what happened at the very end? It uh, wrote uh, the same thing uh, on every row of data. Now because right now we don't have data saved, uh, you might 
get an error, that's fine. That's something we're going to address later. Well, if there's no data to display, well, how, how do we deal with that? So we'll get to that. And I want to run this. I want to save a few comics. That should be part of the preparation also as we work on the project. You set yourself up in Visual Studio. You should create an account, and you should add a few comics to the project so that it, uh, so that it, so that it has data to work with. Save a few things here. Now I, I save stuff to the database. If I go to View Comics, it doesn't fully display yet. That's normal. We need to add a little bit of code in a moment so that when I add comics to the database, I want to automatically update this. We'll do that in a moment. But I want to refresh that. View comics. Well, it's almost <coughs> there. It's repeating the same one several times. Well, that should be obvious why it's happening. Even though I saved, you saw me save four different comics, it's only showing one of the four. Why is that? If this is the code that makes sense, well, what, what's the part that's not quite right? Yes, the index is still at zero. I'm saying here, every time, loop x number of times, every time, give me the 0th title, and then the 0th number. Give me the first one. Well, the first one alphabetically, and therefore, it's showing me the same comic four times. It's looping four times. We need to replace this hard-coded value of 0. We need to replace it with i, the variable i which we defined right there. Start with the zero with uh, start with the zero with item in the array and use that i which will then be zero print the first comic. It loops uh, because of this i plus plus becomes okay zero becomes one. So then is one less than four? Yes, okay then do it again. Data then becomes one doc. It'll be the second comic plus plus one plus one uh, 2. So it goes over to 2. Is 2 less than 4? Yes. So then it uses 2 here, data 2. So it's 0, 1, 2. It's the second, it's the third item in the, in the array. And that'll loop the four times using the variable of i in place of that hard-coded 0 value. It should then display every one of the comics, borrowing the i variable, it should display every one of the comics. So I'm going to try that again. Save it and run it. And now see, uh, see if you've got all of the comics displaying. Let's see, so I saved comics a moment ago. Going to view the comics. There's the comics. So the different ones that, I, uh, that I've added so far appear there, should appear there. Let's pause to see if that worked. Are you, are you actually seeing the comics now, those four or five or three or whatever you added? Anyone having any trouble? You should be seeing the comics, yes? Uh, May have 
Let's fix that right now, and then uh, I'll answer questions. Yes, uh, the, for the device is because, yeah, you're in the device, you have to probably log out and close it, log back in. Okay, because we, we need to trip this function show comics. Function show comics is not happening when we save our comic. So we'll, we'll add it right now to fix that. So if you don't see the uh, if you don't see the updated table right away, which is normal, let's fix that right now. Then I'll answer questions. Let's back up to our function uh, save comic. So uh, fn save comic. Yeah. Okay. Fn save comic. db dot put. We've got two places in put uh, where we should put this. One is going to be. At about line 363, this is inside of db.put, all else it, didn't, it did not fail, it put the comic properly. Okay, we save, we save the comic, we reset the form. Somewhere here, we need to put the function show comics. That will then refresh the table with the latest version of the, of the comics. Doesn't matter where we put it, we'll put it right at the end. So we'll say after successful after successfully saving a comic refresh the table. The the display table or the view table. Refresh the table that has the comics function show comics well, we have two two choices uh, which one uh, should it be show the table prep the table which one should it be yeah. table would make sense but we need to first prep the table we need to first extract the data from the database prepare it then show it in the table if we simply said function show comics table it would show probably still the incomplete version of the table without the update. So perhaps uh, we should rename it. But function show comics prep is the one we should usually call when we want to see a new version of the table. That one has to run first because function show table prep prepares, then it runs comic prep or a comic table and it shows the table. We should prep the data, then show the data. After successfully saving a comic, refresh the, the table. We also need this a few lines up higher where we deal with if there's a conflict in the name. Remember, that's another possibility that could happen in saving the name's conflict. At the moment, we have a version of dealing with conflicting names. Um, that's another spot where we should uh, prep or refresh the table. So I'm going to copy that. We also need it a little higher, um, at about 350, where we've got the other part there. After putting, uh, remember we were doing for the moment random number on the comic, uh, after that part we should then make a new line and then also prep the table to show the latest version. So line 350 or so, right after this whole part about uh, successfully saved the comic. And that's what I had right here. Don't forget to write something here. See? Good thing I made myself a note. Don't need that anymore. So that's what that note was there about that we said. We need to write something here. And what we need to write there is that, well, after saving the comic, we need to refresh the table to show the latest version of the data. Inside the system, the data did get saved to the database, but it didn't. Then, but it then didn't get shown to the user. So we needed to uh, prep the table to show the the latest version of the data again. Okay, so now we'll pause if it doesn't work. Let me run it again. Now what should happen is as soon as you save a comic and switch over to view comics, the latest comic should be there. And I'll make it very obvious by. Uh, I guess we can do Zot. That is a comic, 1968 like or so. Save that. View it. There it is. So right away, it should update from a new saving of a comic. Save another one just in case. 
I want a Zero Girl uh, from like the 90s. Uh, I'll do number two, 95 or something. Save that. Comic saved. View comic. Zero Girl right there. So it should now dynamically update itself when you save the comic. Now let's pause here. Uh, anyone having a little trouble not, not quite working? Be there one moment. This is our code so far, the important one. Yeah, because we're not saving the data in the structure. Right? Yeah. 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 
All right, everyone, let's go on. So uh, this is pretty cool. Finally, we're seeing something on screen. We've been saving all of this data in the database, and we've been seeing the data internally in the system. But now we're starting to see it actually you know, in the app and such. It's even better when you actually see it on your device. Uh, so uh, hopefully, you're also testing on a device once in a while. But so far, what I'm seeing is, OK, I can view the comic. And with that last thing that I did about adding the function uh, prep comics, um, that now should automatically uh, fill itself in. So remember this whole uh, effort that we did. What if we had the dark night? Remember adding those words, adding the the and the uh and all of that. So um, you should test that as well. And um, you know, I save that, and then it will view, and I and I have it there. Uh, and of course, because of the way we set ourselves up, ignoring the or a uh, and such, dark night D appears first, not T after Squirrel Girl. So that that part should work. That was the effort that we did there regarding ignoring the um, ignoring that first word. That'd be one possible reason for the way we saved our our IDs, because this alphabetization is based on the ID that we generate for the comic. So if we had used using an incremental system of, of IDs is a good idea, and it would probably work uh, overall. But perhaps it might run into that issue of it wouldn't ignore the the and such. So all this, this is all of these issues that we have to deal with when we're the developer to, to figure that stuff out. But if it works this far, good. It, we're still got a lot to do because we're only showing here the name of the comic and the year of the comic, but I saved, I mean, the, num the name of the comic and the number of the comic. I want to show the year of the comic. I want to show if I, if I wrote publisher. I want to show if I wrote a note. And later, we're going to add a photo and such. So that's, that's going to be clicking that icon to make a pop-up to display the rest of the comic info. So we need to set that system. Also, that's a pretty ugly table. I would like to make it look nice and colorful and maybe centered or stretched out or make it look nicer. We'll deal with CSS, of course, later. That'll be the icing on the cake. I want the cake first. So we'll make the program, we'll do the programming to make this work, then we'll make it look nice later. If you're using your own CSS from Theme Roller, it probably looks better than this, but still we'll make it look nicer. Have you heard of the concept of zebra striping in CSS? Zebra striping, you've probably seen it but never realized it, is when you see a table and one row is one color and another row is another color and then the same color and then another color, alternating rows of colors. That's often, if you pick the right colors, a much better uh, way for uh, readability. Right now, this is kind of looking like a big wall of text. But if we alternate one color with another color over and over, it looks a little more readable. We'll do that with CSS later. 
what I want to finish doing at the moment with this is um, one thing that will help us for the future. And then uh, we want to deal with show more of the info. And we also want to do delete some of these comics. And then also edit these comics. What if I misspelled it? So we still have a lot to do. We've started to save comics and retrieve comics. Next we need to do delete comics and update comics. Questions so far? Okay, so we'll go back to the code. Here's one more thing we'll do while we're here. This will make more sense a little later. But right now, this row of data in the table is not very smart. It's just raw data being put onto the screen. Right now, there's no, um, there's no correlation between what's on screen and that piece of data in the database. Well, imagine, again, uh, when I output this, my very first comic was The Dark Knight. I want to link this first row, The Dark Knight, with the piece of data in the database. That means we're going to deal with the ID of the document. Don't change this, but we're going to deal with the ID of the document. If we can link this title and this number with its ID, we can use it later to retrieve all of the data. So we're going to add a data attribute. Remember, data-role, data-transition. What else did we have? Data-icon. We have those data attributes that are defined by PouchDB. Well, anything that's a data-whatever actually is an HTML5 uh, concept. We've seen data-icon, data-role, etc. Those are the ones that uh, uh, jQuery Mobile uses. Data-whatever is an HTML5 concept that we can use to sort of link any Arbitra arbitrary arbitrary uh, data with another. I want to link this row to the entry in the database that corresponds with what I'm seeing on screen. So I want to add to this data uh, to this TR table row an attribute of data dash anything we want, let's call it ID, equals single quotes, data-role, data-icon, we're, we're making our own data-ID. That is valid. You can create any data attribute you want. I'm using ID to remind you that this is the ID in the database. I'm using single quotes here because of course if I do the double quotes that's gonna break my uh, my string single quotes okay data brackets I dot doc dot underscore ID I want to use the ID of the I value which is zero the first one the dark knight I want to use the ID of the Dark Knight and link it to the title of that comic and the number of that comic. I'm finished, right? No? Yes? It's, it's not... Uh, well, we're going to see number when we click the icon, which we get to later. This is not dynamic. This is going to literally write data i doc id. It's not going to write the id related to that data. So we have to do what we've done before about ending the string space plus continuing JavaScript space plus continuing HTML. I want to dynamically put 
uh, an I a data ID attribute based on the underscore ID in the database. So it's got to be JavaScript. So we've got to break the string, continue the JavaScript, continue the HTML. So um, to confirm this is working, we're going to save it and run it. The, the, the place to view this in the browser, okay, I'm going to run this in the browser. I'm going to run this in the browser. The place to view this, a couple of places. Um, instead of F12 to inspect, you can just do a plain old classic view page source. Right. This is a this is a way just to review the raw HTML of the document, and then if you find the place where we've got your comics saved, oh, actually, because it's dynamic, it doesn't display. Okay, the other place. Let's go back to the F12. We can view it in sources over here since this one is actually dynamic. So if you go back to F12 and this time go to the Sources tab, double click on Index, and then go find the place in the code where that table exists dynamically, then we'll see it there. Let's see. Elements, okay. Guess not source, okay. Uh, elements. Okay, yeah, elements. So in elements, um, here it is. So eventually you find there's a table, border one, body of the table, a table row, a row of data, data dash ID, DAR <coughs> number three, 1984. There's the cell, there's the number. There's the icon. There's the cell, there's the number, there's the icon. There's another row next to it, IRO1, 1998. Uh, right there. Iron Maiden 1, Iron Man. The next one, IRO12, etc. Wonder Woman, Zero Girl, Squirrel Girl, etc. So this is just informational. The data is the data attribute. Uh, you should see that it's showing it. If it's just literally data ID equals, <coughs> you know, the, the the string, it's not quite right. You should see the you should see the ID. So the ID is linked to that row, which we will need a little later when we want to view all of the info when we click on the icon, and then when we want to edit that comic, because it needs to know. I'm going to edit Squirrel Girl number one. I'm going to click on it to edit it. It needs to know that we're clicking on this row to edit this entry in the database, and it's linked by the ID. All right, did that work for you?
before we start to set ourselves up to view the, the detailed info or edit the comic uh, or delete an individual comic, let's set up in case we wanted to delete the whole database to start over. Uh, so some of you may have been experimenting well. Well, I can go to application and delete the database here. I would not do it this way. I wouldn't delete the database from the viewer because then it's going to break the connection in a weird way between the app and the internal guts of the thing. So we're going to set up a way in the app to delete the database. That's going to be a much safer way because then we need to reinitialize the database. So what I want to do from the from that info button or um, settings or whatever we call it from that button um, where we have the options yeah from that button where we have our logout I also want to add the ability to delete the database to start over so we need to create a a button in this options screen label it then we need to write the JavaScript that will delete the database. So let's open index.html and let's go find this options screen and let's add a new button. So index.html These are called PG options. PG options screen. line 113 so once you find your section called PG options we've got a button right here to log out Let's also add a button to delete the database. Of course, the design of it and all of that uh, you'll deal with later. Let's say we'll add it before our previous button. It's going to be the same idea as we have already below it. href, a href, nowhere, a tag, let's say delete collection, delete comics. You don't really want to say delete database, I guess. Obviously, we know it as a database, but that's a little bit too techy for people. Uh, you could call it if you want that. Delete my comics. Delete collection. Start over. You can call this however you want. That makes sense for the user. But one way to, um, you know, we've got to be obvious that it's going to do something. href, so it's not going to any uh, HTML section or anything. It needs a data role. So remember this. It's going to be a button. Data icon. We need to find an icon that represents, you know, deletion. Data icon. I think we have an icon called delete, but I don't think it's. A, I don't think it quite del. Uh, I don't think it quite conveys exactly the concept of deleting everything. ID. This needs a unique identifier so we can use it in JavaScript. btn delete collection. So BTN collection is the unique ID. We're going to have a button in this option screen. We're going to go back to the JavaScript. We're going to create a JavaScript object of this HTML node. Uh, create an event handler so that when you click on it, stuff will happen. Question? Yes, it's an A tag that ends. So I'm going to save that. Let's go over to index.js. Uh, 
Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to copy the ID. It does not auto auto type for you between documents. Maybe there's an option somewhere that'll do that. But uh, I obviously need to type it exactly the same. Like when we did uh, save comic, I saw people will call it save comics and save comic. Uh, so it might be easier to copy what you type in the HTML and paste it into the JavaScript because it won't autocomplete it until you've typed it one time in the JavaScript. Back to index.js. Let's find our area where we've created all of these variables regarding pouch. Uh, line 230. Var dollar L BTN is equal to dollar jQuery selector quotes pound BTN delete collection. Don't forget the pound sign here. I saw this happen a few times. If you don't write the pound sign here, it might not give you an error. You're pressing the button, nothing happens. One common way to kind of figure out what's wrong with my button, nothing happens, is go check. Did you write an ID on the HTML? Did you write the pound sign because it's an ID? Pound sign. LBTN collection. A note here. Button to delete comic collection. I'll create object. For deleting the comic collection, the database. Delete collection. Okay, so then we need uh, an event listener um, to wait for a button click, which then runs a function which does the process of deleting the database and reinitializing the database. So we'll go to our section where we've got our uh, event handlers. Dot add event. Let me see where do we have those? Form sign up, log out. Yeah, so at the end of the code, uh, at about line 446. So before the end of our whole on device ready function, before the end of everything, that is, we need to set up um, an on click. When you click the button uh, to delete collection, run a function, which we then need to define the function. We've got L dollar BTN delete collection on method on the event of something which event the click event comma afterward run a function we'll call it be very creative function delete collection So this is um, event listener to um, run a function to uh, delete collection, to, to, lead, to delete database.
Okay, so the syntax here, we do not write parentheses. But this is a function. We need to define this function. So we need to back up before these event listeners and create that function that handles the event. Back up somewhere here before the end of our pouch code. I never wrote my comment here. Function show comics table. Um, not necessary, but I for myself was losing track of what is this? What is this straight curly brace? Well, that's the end of, uh, if you want to be complete, that's the end of function show comics table. Okay, so we need to define that function. Function fn delete collection. And that's, uh, like I've said before, it's often a good idea to have this uh, console log running, uh, this console log to say that what particular function should be running at this point. So um, if I were to save and run this and I click the button, it would give me the immediate feedback function delete collection is running. OK, so thinking about it in terms of the user, um, I've got some comics saved. I've, I've had fun in the app. I'm kind of poking around, and I go over to you know the settings, and I click here. And uh, there's a button that says delete collection. I say, I wonder what that means. And I press it. Everything's gone at that moment. Well, that's not what usually happens on most apps. When you're going to do something so drastic, what often happens first? Are you sure? It's going to ask, are you sure? Confirm. So right here, we're going to set up a, a system to ask for confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? And nowadays, because we're so impatient, we see something pop up, we close it right away, get that ad out of my way. Well, we're going to have two confirmations, because it's going to pop up. Are you sure you want to delete? I'm not paying attention. Yes. Wait, what did I just click on? OK, second pop-up. Are you sure you're going to delete your collection? By that second time, they click OK, then it's gone. You can add a third confirmation just in case they're really sleepy. But two is enough, I think, to confirm. Are you going to delete this? Yes, two times? OK, now it's gone. And a whole system of undos and all of that is more complex, but could be set up. I'm not quite planning on setting up a whole undo of the database. I think by having two confirmations is enough uh, to put the blame back on the user. We've told them enough. We've helped them enough. You're about to delete everything twice. They've confirmed twice. It's gone. So what we'll do here, we need a conditional statement. And we have a variety to choose from. Um, let's do a switch. We've used switches recently, so we'll just keep using them. and switch to confirm that uh, to confirm database deletion confirm with the user twice if they really want to delete their collection.
we'll do the first level of confirmation, then we'll take a break. Uh, the first level of confirmation here within this switch. Um, we have cases. Remember, as usual, we have a case. Which stuff happens here. We could have a second case. Other stuff happens here. We can have as many cases as we want. If we if we have a known quantity, oftentimes a switch is useful for when we have a known quantity. There's these possibilities that I know. An if else statement could be uh, maybe better if uh, if I don't quite know the possibilities. Default case in case I I didn't think of a case. Don't forget these breaks. Uh, if you don't put the break, even if case B is selected, it would write this code and then, I mean, it would, it would apply this code, it would run this code, and then keep going until it finds a break. So make sure you've got a break to delineate each case block. This possibility, that possibility, a possibility that I didn't think of, that's the default. And what we will do here... Well, so that we don't have gibberish, uh, we'll, we'll write some console log here. We wish to delete. This other possibility, they change their minds. And then uh, default, there could be a third possibility that somehow I didn't think of, so we can say third choice or third possibility. One bit of advice that I've read that I think is useful when you're dealing with switches or any conditional statement. I've read that it is often more efficient um, in, a, in, a, in a sort of like a processing sort of way, resources sort of way. If you put the most commonly, the most common possibility first, uh, what you think should be most common, if you put that as the first case, or if you're doing an if-else statement and such, what's the most common possibility? Put that first. That way, when the code is processed and it gets to the first case, it's uh, skips everything else. If the most common possibility is the fourth one, it's going to check, is it this? Using memory. Is it this? Using memory. Is it this? No. The fourth one? Yes. Well, you used up resources trying to figure out those other possibilities that if you know what is the most common one, put it first. And in our case, true or false. If they go here, they click a big button labeled delete collection, they probably mean it. So we're putting true as our first case. They didn't actually mean it, so then it goes over to false. It probably won't ever get to default because there's do you want to delete or not. We'll put the second level of confirmation after the break, but one more thing before the break is the actual question that will pop up for them to ask them. Um, within this switch, we're going to put in a confirm, a JavaScript confirm method. Uh, this will make a basic JavaScript powered uh, pop up. It'll pop up with a message, whatever we want to write, and then either uh, either yes or no, or confirm or cancel. And what we want to ask them in um, quotes here, or tell them in quotes, you are about to delete your whole collection. Dot space backslash n confirm. This will create a new line. This will press enter, sort of. This will put it on one line, new line, 
second line, confirm. So you'll get a pop-up confirmation box that automatically has buttons of confirm or cancel. That's what that does. Pops up, asks your question, they click uh, yes, confirm, it'll jump to true, and then the console for the moment will say they wish to delete. If they click cancel, the console will say they change their mind. Uh, there should not be a third possibility, but if there is, it jumps to default. We'll take our break, and then after the break, we will do the second level of confirmation. We can do another switch, but we'll do a different way, just to show possibilities. Let me check if my code works at this point. I want to go click the delete button. I want to take a look at the console. I want to see if I get these messages. And I want to fix any errors if they, if they pop up. So let's see here. Console. I'm going to clean my console. I'm going to go direct. I'm confirming that I've got comics in the database right there. Great. I'm going to go then to the options screen. I've got a brand new button, delete collection. I'm going to click it. Pops up. You are about to delete your whole collection. Confirm. I got cold feet. Cancel. Pop up. They change their mind. I'm going to try it again. Delete collection. This time I'll click OK. They wish to delete. Nothing will get deleted yet. It's just the console output. But I'm confirming that my switch is working for true or false. Um, I should not have any other third possibility. If I click outside of it, nothing happens. If I press Escape, Nothing happens. Oh, if I press escape, they change their minds. So let's um, let's take our first break. If that worked, good. Take a break. If it didn't, call me over. We're uh, we're at seven fifteen. We'll take a break until seven twenty-five.